Hello, today's topic of discussion is Legendre's polynomial. We have divided this chapter 4 into 5 modules. In module 1, we start with a brief discussion of Legendre's polynomial. Then we move into Legendre's equation and its solutions. In module 2, we derive the generating function of Legendre's polynomial. Module 3 discusses the orthogonal property of Legendre's polynomial along with some examples. In module 4, we derive few recurrence relations along with the proofs. Also Roderick's formula is also derived. We end this chapter with Legendre's function of second kind which is done in details in module 5. Let us now move to module 1, slide 1. We start with module 1, a brief introduction. The Legendre's polynomial were first introduced in 1782 by Adrian Mary Legendre as the coefficients in the expansion of Newtonian potential. Let us now see why actually you study this Legendre's polynomial. Legendre's polynomial are special cases of Legendre functions which are important in problems involving spheres or spherical coordinates. Due to their orthogonality property, they are also useful in numerical analysis. Legendre polynomials are used in fluid dynamics to study the flow around the outside of a puff of hot gas rising through the air. Legendre's polynomial are used to obtain global bounds on the variation of the phase of an elastic scattering amplitude. Legendre polynomials are also used in multiple expansions. The picture which you are seeing is not of the mathematician Legendre. For two decades, this picture which is of a French politician Louis Legendre was assumed to be the picture of uh, the mathematician Legendre. And for 200 years, we took this politician as our French mathematician A. M. Legendre till 2005 when the mistake was discovered. So what is the picture, the true picture of Legendre? Unfortunately, we do not have it. This is the only sketch that is available in, uh, in the internet which gives you the Legendre's portrait which was done by the French artist Julien Leopold Boilly. We now look into Legendre's equation and derive its solution. The equation which you see 1 minus x squared y double dash which is d2y dx square minus 2x dy dx plus n into n plus 1 into y equal to 0 where n is a positive integer. This equation is called Legendre's equation. We will now obtain a solution of this Legendre's equation. Let the series solution of this Legendre equation be of the form y equal to summation m equal to 0 to infinity c m x to the power k minus m where c naught not equal to 0. What we do now is we substitute this solution in the Legendre's equation. That means we find the first derivative dy dx, the second derivative d2y dx square and put those values in this differential equation. And when you do that, you get an equation in this form 1 minus x square summation m equal to 0 to infinity c m k minus m k minus m minus 1 x to the power k minus m minus 2 minus 2 x summation m equal to 0 to infinity c m k minus m k to the power k x to the power k minus m minus 1 plus n into n minus 1 summation 
m equal to 0 to infinity c m x to the power k minus m equal to 0. Next we simplify that equation and bring it in this form. What we will do now is to obtain indicial equation from this equation number 4. By indicial equation I mean that you obtain the coefficient of highest power of x from this equation. Now to obtain the highest power of x from this equation, you need to put a value of m such that it gives the highest power of x. For example, if I put m equal to 0 here, I get x to the power k and here I get x to the power k minus 2. If I put m equal to 1, I get x to the power k minus 1 here and x to the power k minus 3 here. So obviously x to the power k is the highest power of x that we obtain from this equation by substituting m equal to 0. So the initial equation in this case will be by putting m equal to 0 in this particular equation and when we do that you get an equation of the form c0 k minus 0 minus n k minus 0 plus n plus 1 which is this equation number 5. Obviously c0 is not equal to 0 by assumption. So you are left with a quadratic equation in k which you solve and you get the roots of k as k equal to n and minus of n plus 1 which is unequal and differ by an integer. Next we equate the coefficient uh, of x to the power k minus 1 to 0 in this uh, particular expression and if you do that if I substitute m equal to 1 I get the coefficient of x to the power k minus 1 so by putting m equal to 1 so I will get by substituting m equal to 1 c1 k minus 1 minus n k minus 1 plus n plus 1 x to the power k minus 1 so I get an expression like this now already we have solved for k which gives the value k equal to n and k equal to minus n plus 1. If we substitute that here, we are not getting the value to be 0. So for k equal to n and for k equal to minus of n plus 1, none of these expressions is 0, which implies our c1 is equal to 0. Next we equate to 0 the coefficient of x to the power k minus m in this expression. Now as you can see here, we already have x to the power k minus m. So the coefficient of x to the power m in this case is going to be k minus m minus n, k minus m plus n plus 1. Now what will be the coefficient of x to the power k minus m in this particular summation? What you do here is, I will replace this m by m minus 2 and if you do that, uh, please note this is a minus sign here. So if I replace this m by m minus 2, this becomes k minus m plus 2 and minus 2. So that 2 and minus 2 plus 2 and minus 2 cancelled and you are left with x to the power k minus m. When you do that here, you have to do the similar thing here, you have to do the similar thing here and you have to do the similar thing here. That is you replace each of this m by m minus 2 and when you do that you get this coefficient of x to the power k minus m here as c of m minus 2. I replace this by m minus 2 so k minus m plus 2 similar thing here so k minus m plus 1 minus this whole expression because this is already the coefficient of x to the power k minus m. So we equate this whole expression to 0 and you are left with cm equal to k minus m plus 2, k minus m plus 1, k divided by k minus m minus n, k minus m plus n plus 1, cm minus 2. So we obtain this recurrence relation of cm in terms of cm minus 2. Case 1, 
when k equal to n, we substitute this value in this particular expression when k equal to n. And when you do that, you get an expression minus of n minus m plus 2, n minus m plus 1 divided by m 2 n minus m plus 1 into c m minus 2. Now, in this recurrence relation, you substitute m equal to 3, 5, 7 and so on, all the odd numbers. When you do that, when you substitute m equal to 3, this gives you n minus 3 plus 2, n minus 3 plus 1, m, this is 3, 2 n minus 3 plus 1 into c 3 minus 2, which is c 1. And already we have derived that your c 1 is 0. And since c 1 is 0, in this case, this whole expression becomes 0 and you get c 3 is equal to 0. If you continue like this, if I put m equal to 5 now, then this becomes c 5. Here it is going to be some number and then c 5 minus 2, which is c 3 and it becomes 0, because already you have calculated that c 3 equal to 0. So, c 3, c 5, c 7, all the odd numbers c 2 n plus 1, they are all coming to be 0 since your c 1 is 0. We now look what happens when you put the values of m to be even numbers, that is m equal to 2, 4, 6 in this particular expression. When I put m equal to 2, I get c 2 here, then n minus 2 plus 2, which gives you n, n minus 2 plus 1, which gives you n minus 1, divided by 2 times 2 n minus 1, which happens when you put m equal to 2 here, and c m minus 2, so this becomes c 0. So, you get an expression of c 2 in terms of c 0. Next, you put m equal to 4 in this particular expression. And when you do that, you get c 4 is equal to minus of n minus 2, n minus 3, 4 times 2 n minus 3 into c 2. Already, you have already calculated this c 2 here. So, substitute this value of c 2 from here in here and you will get an expression of c 4, which is equal to n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 divided by 2 into 4 into 2 n minus 1 into 2 n minus 3 times c 0. Like that, you can calculate c 6, c 8 and so on. Now, you rewrite the equation number 2, which is in this form y equal to summation m equal to 0 to infinity c m x to the power k minus m, where c 0 not equal to 0 for k equal to n. And if I substitute it here and write it in the expanded form, I will get this to be y equal to c 0 x to the power n plus c 1 x to the power n minus 1 plus c 2 x to the power n minus 2 plus dot dot dot. Now, substituting all the values of c i from this previous expressions, that is all uh, c i s which are started with the odd numbers are 0 and all the even values of c i, that is c 2, c 4, c 6 and so on. If you substitute it here and replace c 0 by an arbitrary constant a, you get an expression like this given in 10, that is y equal to a times x to the power n minus n into n minus 1 2 into 2 n minus 1 x to the power n minus 2 plus n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 divided by 2 into 4 into 2 n minus 1 into 2 n minus 3 x to the power n minus 4 minus and so on. Next, we look into case 2, where you substitute k equal to minus of n plus 1. Please note, these are the roots of the initial equation, which we have calculated before. And if you put k equal to minus of n plus 1 in this particular expression 7 and simplify, you will get an expression like this, 
that is C m equal to n plus 1 minus 1 n plus m divided by m into 2 n plus m plus 1 into C m minus 2. In the similar manner, we now put m equal to 2, 4, 6 in this particular expression. Please note if you are going to put m equal to 3, 5, 7, all the odd numbers, you are again going to get all the c i is to be 0 when they are all odd. So, we do not show it in this slide, we just put m equal to 2, 4, 6 in this particular expression. And when you do that, you get c 2 to be n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 2 times 2 n plus 3 into c 0, c 4 will be n plus 4 n plus 2 into n plus 4 divided by 4 times 2 n plus 5 into c 2 and when you substitute this c 2 here, you are going to get this whole expression and similarly, you can calculate c 6, c 8 and so on. Now, for k equal to minus of n plus 1, we look into the infinite series y equal to summation m equal to 0 to infinity c m x to the power k minus m when c 0 not equal to 0. When you expand this, it is going to give an expression like this given in 12, that is y equal to c 0 x to the power minus n minus 1 plus c 1 x to the power minus n minus 2 plus c 2 x to the power minus n minus 3 and so on. Substituting all the values of c i's that we have calculated previously and replacing c 0 by an arbitrary constant b we get an expression y equal to b times x to the power minus n minus 1 plus n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 2 times 2 n plus 3 into x to the power minus n minus 3 plus n plus 1 into n plus 2 into n plus 3 into n plus 4 divided by 2 into 4 into 2 n plus 3 2 n plus 5 x to the power minus n minus 5 and so on. So, what you see here y 1, y 2, they are the two solutions of this Legendre's equation and these two solutions are linearly independent. So, I rename one of the solution as y 1 and the other as y 2 and these two are the linearly independent solution of the Legendre's equation 1 minus x square d 2 y d x square minus 2 x d y d x plus n into n plus 1 y equal to 0. Now, taking the value of a to be 1, 3, 5 into 2 n minus 1 divided by n factorial, the solution y 1, they can be expressed in this form, which we denote by p n x and this p n x is called a Legendre's polynomial of degree n or a Legendre's function of first kind. So, thus the expression for this Legendre's polynomial of degree n is given by p n x equal to 1, 3, 5 dot 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 2 n minus 1 divided by n factorial. The whole thing is multiplied by this expression x to the power n minus n into n minus 1 divided by 2 into 2 n minus 1 x to the power n minus 2 plus n into n minus 1 into n minus 2 into n minus 3 divided by 2 dot 4 into 2 n minus 1, 2 n minus 3 x to the power n minus 4 minus more terms are there. By taking b equal to n divided by 1 dot 3 dot 5 dot dot 2 n plus 1, the solution y 2 which is denoted by q n x is called the Legendre's function of second kind and we have the expression q n x to be n factorial divided by 1 dot 3 dot 5 into 2 n plus 1 into x to the power minus of n plus 1 plus n plus 1 into n plus 2 divided by 2 into 2 n plus 3 x to the power minus of n plus 3 plus n plus 1 into n plus 2 into n plus 3 into n plus 4 divided by 2 dot 4 into 2 n plus 3 into 2 n plus 5 x to the power minus of n plus 5 plus dot dot. Please note since n is a positive integer, 
this q n x is an infinite series and not a polynomial. And that is why we call this as Legendre's function of second kind, not a Legendre's polynomial of, uh, of second kind. So, with this, we wrap up the module 1, where we uh, look into a brief introduction of Legendre's polynomial. Then, we look into the solution of Legendre's equation, and we found that we get the first two linearly independent solution. The first one we call the Legendre's polynomial or Legendre's function of first kind, and the second one q n x we call the Legendre's function of second kind. We have just obtained two linearly independent solution of the Legendre's equation, namely p n x and q n x. The first one is the Legendre's polynomial or Legendre's function of first kind, and the second one the Legendre's function of second kind. We now look into few examples involving Legendre's polynomial or Legendre's function of first kind. We now start with few examples. The first one, let us determine first few Legendre's polynomial. As seen before, the Legendre's polynomial of degree n is defined by this expression. Now we are going to put n equal to 0, 1, 2, 3 and to see how many Legendre's polynomial we can generate. For n equal to 0, if you put this value here, please note all these numbers are odd numbers. So, 0 you cannot put it here. So, 0 you will put it here and you will put it here. That is why in p 0 x you get x to the power 0 by 0 factorial and the value is 1. For n equal to 1, if I pluck n equal to 1 here, I get 2 minus 1 which is 1. So, it will stop here. Then x to the power 1 divided by 1 factorial and for n equal to 1, all these terms become 0. So, that is why you get p 1 x equal to 1 into x to the power 1 by 1 factorial in z which is equal to x. When you put n equal to 2, here you get 3. So, this will continue 1 into 3 divided by 2 factorial x square and you put n equal to 2 here. So, 2 into 2 minus 1 divided by 2 into 2 into this is 4 minus 1 x to the power uh, 2 minus 2 which is 0. So, you get this particular term which is half 3 x square minus 1 and you can put 3, 4, 5 whatever number you can there and you can generate uh, the legendary polynomials here. If I now draw the graph here, this is what you get of the first 5 legendary polynomial. For p 0 x, it is just a straight line parallel to the x axis. For p 1 x, it is equal to x, which is nothing but a straight line passing through the origin, making an angle of 45 degree. For p 2 x, which is half of 3 x square minus 1, it is nothing but a parabola, which is given by this blue line here. Likewise, you can solve for, you can uh, plot for p 4 x and p 5 x and you get the corresponding curves. Our next example, given a polynomial 2 x cube plus 2 x square minus x minus 3, we are going to express this in terms of Legendre's polynomial. So, the first what we do is, we calculate what is x cube, x square and x in terms of the Legendre polynomial. Here p 0 x, as you can see, it is 1, p 1 x is x, p 2 x is half of 3 x square minus 1 and hence x square can will be 2, p 2 plus 1 divided by 2. Likewise, p 3 x is this expression and we can calculate x cube from this expression. Now, in the <coughs> given expression, in the given polynomial, we substitute the values of x cube, x square, x and the constant here. And if you simplify, you get the value to be 1 by 15, 12 p 3 x plus 20 p 2 x plus 3 p 1 x minus 45 p 0 x. So, this is the solution of this particular problem. Example 3, we have to show that p dash n 1 equal to half n into n plus 1. 
Now Pnx is a solution of the Legendre's equation and hence it is going to satisfy the Legendre's equation. So we in the Legendre's equation we have replaced the variable y with Pnx and you get this expression 14. Now you put x equal to 1 in this expression. If you do that the first term vanishes and then you put x equal to 1 here, here and here. And using the result that Pn1 is equal to 1 we will get p dash n1 is equal to half n into n plus 1. Our next example, you have to prove that all the roots of p and x are distinct. That means they are not repeated. So to prove that, uh, we use the method of contradiction. So we assume let's p and x are not, the, let the roots of p and x are not distinct that is there must be at least two roots which might be equal and let let be beta. Now from the theory of equation we get that p n beta is equal to 0 and p n dash beta is equal to 0. Now since p n x is a solution of the Legendre's equation we, we have that 1 minus x square p double dash x minus 2 x p dash n x plus n into n plus 1 p n x is equal to 0. That is p n x satisfies the Legendre's equation. We now use Leibniz theorem and differentiate this expression r times. If you do that after a little simplification you will come across this particular expression. Putting r equal to 0 and x equal to get beta we get this particular expression. The reason is that if you put r equal to 0 here you get p n dash beta and here p n double dash beta is equal to 0. If you put r equal to 1 and x equal to beta here and using the previous expressions we will get p n double dash beta equal to 0. Similarly if you put r equal to 3, 4 likewise n minus 2 and if you follow the same procedure you will arrive to the conclusion that p n beta the nth derivative is equal to 0 at the point x equal to beta. Now, we already have the expression for p n x is equal to 1 dot 5, 3 dot 5 into 2 n minus 1 divided by n factorial multiplied by this whole expression. Now, if I, if we differentiate this n number of times, since this is x to the power n, we will be getting this whole constant here multiplied by n factorial. Now, in one case, you have seen that this expression is equal to 0 at the point x equal to beta and in the other case you see that this expression is not equal to 0 at x equal to beta and these results are contradictory and this is because we have assumed that the roots are not distinct. Hence we conclude that all the roots of p and x must be distinct. Summing up module 1, we start by looking into the brief introduction of Legendre's polynomial. We then move on to the solutions of the Legendre's equation. The two solutions are linearly independent, which we denote by Pnx and Qnx. Pnx, Legendre's polynomial or Legendre's function of first kind, and Qnx, Legendre's function of second kind. In the next module, that is module 2, we will learn about the generating function of the Legendre's polynomial. Thank you.